What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. They found a complex maze of passages, along with an underground section that suggested the labyrinth really existed. Maybe there wasn't a bullheaded maze guardian inside, but there were many bull-themed frescoes and such inside. Even back then, labyrinths and minotaurs went hand in hand with each other. And, I had to say, the bow voids before me appeared exactly how you'd expect a minotaur to look in real life. Their leader, a measure larger than the others, practically oozed with evil energy. Our labyrinth was a little sparse when it came to bosses. I only had creatures selected for floors 10, 20, and 30 but this leader guy, I thought, had what it took to occupy floor 40 or 50. I wanted him, no matter what. I just couldn't fight the feeling. Unfortunately, these monsters didn't seem like they'd be too loyal to me. They probably just thought of me as a nice patron, or employer, to have. It was clear they wanted to leverage this relationship so they could annihilate their current foes. If I was honest with myself, that was the only conclusion to make. So I busted out just a little lord's ambition on them. If they saw how awesome I was, maybe they'd get in line and, whoa. They didn't seem to notice at all. I was right in front of them, and they're still glaring and yelling at each other. Should I take more drastic measures and tame them down? But as I weighed my options, a clearly miffed Rigard stepped forward. How dare you show such rudeness before our lord? I see that I, Rigard, need to show all of you your place. He was normally quite gentle, doggedly pursuing administrative tasks around town, but I knew Rigard had secretly been working out. He was stronger than the younger guys, at least, like Gobta and Rigor, and given his performance against the paladins when they attacked, he definitely had something of a warrior inside him. The way I saw it, he was stronger than the leaders of both factions here. What? Look at this bureaucrat who thinks he's the lord of all things. We don't need some demon lord flunky to badmouth us. The leaders quickly barked back, while their younger hangers-on bleated their agreement. I've had people look down on me before, but I don't think I've ever been treated this badly. Just a little lord's ambition was enough to humble everybody before these guys. They were just so worked up, oblivious to what was going on around them. I thought being dissed was better than being feared, but if it gets this bad, I might have to reconsider. Still, a little lesson ought to help them see the light. Rigard looked at me. I nodded, just about ready to give permission, when... What? What on? Oh dear, some trouble? Not a problem. We felt a tremendous wave of pressure from outside town. Someone had broken through Shuna's barrier around it, and soon we felt the massive aura and vast magical energy of a monster, no, likely a magic born. Judging by this act, we doubted this guy was here to make any friends. The bovoids and equinoids might not have noticed my lord's ambition, but they sure noticed this, judging by their panicked gasps. Such power. Whoa, demon lord, are you getting attacked by another of your kind? Up until now, the forest of Jura had been protected by a pact between the demon lords. These guys here talked a big game, but they were in way over their heads. Against a real threat, they had to face up and admit how powerless they really were. I no longer had time to deal with them. I hated to throw out the idea of having them serve as bosses, it just felt so epic to me, but there were other things to do. Instantly, I transformed into my human form and shouted, let's go, to Benamaru and the rest. Yes sir. As you say. I ran toward the source of the disturbance. Upon reaching the site, I saw ten or so members of Team Kuranai surrounding three men. Several security guards, gatekeepers, and Team Reborn troops were on the ground. Oops, I saw Gobzo among them. I was sure he gave them a fight, but it was crazy to even fight them at all. Meanwhile, the survivors were busy directing the townspeople and visitors to evacuation sites. They were acting just as they'd been trained to, which was nice. Things weren't too chaotic yet, but I hated to see casualties this early on. I turned to the three men behind this. One was tall, well-formed, and wore an earring. The second was enormous, a virtual slab of meat and sported a nose ring. The third was smaller, but his frame going beyond merely large and venturing into heavy territory, and he had a lip piercing. They sported colorful hair in strange styles, which only added to their stereotypical street punk look. You realize you've perpetrated this violence in the domain of the demon lord Rimuru? Shouted Xi'an, who had been following behind me. The earring guy stepped up, grinning fiendishly. Out of the way. I'm not here to deal with minions. We wanted to rub out Clayman and seize his demon lord spot, 
but you got in our way, and we're pissed off about it. I ain't here to kill for fun, but mess with us, and we ain't gonna go easy, all right? He was being rude and intimidating, but looking around me, I realized nobody was dead. Judging by the difference in magic force, if they hadn't been going easy, even Team Reborn would have been wiped out. He must have been telling the truth, kind of. Maybe they weren't as bad as they looked, but if they wanted a fight, they'd get one. We were in the middle of my public unveiling as a demon lord. The Founders Festival was just around the corner, and we had merchants from all the world over going in and out. It'd be tough to let an incursion like this go without comment. It was annoying, but so be it. I'll just have to take them on. Wait, Sir Rimaru, let me handle this. Sheehan stopped me from stepping forward. Benamaru was trying to step up, too, but I guess they had looked at each other and silently decided which would go first. The casualties among Sheehan's forces were the likely decider. Oh, you one of the demon Lord Rimaru's aides? Dad told me about you. The ogre woman who whipped Clayman's ass. I like it. Let's warm up with you first. Wait, big bro. Can we take her? You can have the demon lord. Yes, yes. I'm getting hungry, you know. I could use a girl or two right now. Sounded like they were all brothers. The earring guy must have been the eldest, and their dad told them about not just me, but Sheehan and Clayman's battle. Their father must have been either a demon lord or a close associate, but judging by their energy levels, each equivalent to a pre-awakened Clayman, I assumed the former. But who? I immediately crossed Guy, Milam, Ramirez, and Luminous off the list. That left Dagrul, Dino, or Leon, but the last two seemed pretty unlikely. Was Dagrul my prime suspect? Sheehan, meanwhile, took a step forward. Silence. Sir Rimuru is busy with his audiences right now. To save on time, I will handle all three of you at once. Whoa, are you picking on us? I wanted to go easy on a girl, but forget it. I'm gonna make you cry, I swear. That sass is like a punch in the gut. I bet you're gonna make me feel the fullest I've been in a while. I groaned, taking on three foes more powerful than you at the same time was insanely reckless, even by Sheehan's standards. I tried to stop her, but this trio was already far too worked up to call time out. Why does Sheehan always get so freaked out like this? Benamaru? Just let Sheehan do what she wants. If we're going easy on them, Sheehan is more suited to that than I am. His casual response stunned me into silence. Guess I'd just have to give up. I decided to believe she'd win and just let her have her fun. That said, I didn't want my town wrecked. I suggested that we all move elsewhere, and surprisingly, the trio agreed to it and followed me, curiously checking out their surroundings as I led them into our freshly built battle arena. Whoa, lady. Earring guy said. You got guts. I'll admit that, but if you want to take back what you said, now's the time. Let me show you magicules aren't the only deciding factor in a battle. She snorted back. I remember a certain red-colored ogre saying something similar a while back. But regardless, we now had an audience of rubberneckers here in this arena, ready to watch Sheehan fight off these three would-be pretenders coming for my throne. Sheehan wiped the floor with them. The fat guy with the lip piercing moved far more nimbly than looks would suggest, charging at Sheehan like a cannonball. Sheehan just kicked him away and sent him flying straight into the earring dude. Then, seizing that single open moment, she plunged her fist into the stomach of the nose ring man, too stunned to react in time. Grabbing earring man by the arm and collar, she executed a perfect judo throw on him, smashing his head against the stone floor. He lay there, motionless. Ah! What did you do to my brother? The fat man with the lip piercing grabbed Sheehan from behind, attempting to lift her up. Sheehan's brute strength stymied him. What the? But I'm so much stronger than you. Sheehan glared at the man and snickered. Shifting position, she locked arms with him, and the test of strength began. Snap. Sadly, it wasn't long before the fat man's arms both bent in ways they shouldn't have. They were all magic-born, so I figured they'd be all right, but judging by the way he was screaming and writhing around, it must have done a lot of damage. But Sheehan didn't even take a moment to marvel at her work before another piston-like fist slammed home. Before the fat man could shout anything else, she landed a one-two finish on him like none other. The earring guy attempted a screamer of a kick on her body, but Sheehan simply bent backward and let it whiz past her. But the guy was smiling. His leg, still in the air, came down like a vicious battle axe, aimed squarely at Sheehan's head. There was a loud, dull thud. Sheehan's stone-like head had just shattered the man's leg. 
she executed a low kick to shatter the other one and sent him crashing to the ground. Without missing a beat, Sheehan straddled him, landing a flurry of punches on his head and body. That sealed the deal. Without even needing to take out her enhanced Goriki Maru sword, Sheehan had beaten the crap out of those three guys. Clearly, she had grown stronger. Smashing these opponents, all of whom equaled or beat her in magic force, didn't even quicken her breathing. And she took all three down at the same time, no less. Benamaru? Sheehan's? Yes, this is quite a surprise. I see she went quite easy on them after all. That's not what I'm talking about. This isn't Milam there, on the arena stage. Benamaru clearly had a different definition of going easy than me. That wasn't at all what I meant, but, ah well. No point wasting my breath. Seriously, though, Sheehan's amazing. No joke. She just proved that you can easily overwhelm an opponent otherwise you're equal through prudent use of your magical force. Whipping Clayman must have helped her grow a lot. Benamaru's non-reaction to it indicated he was expecting this all along, too. I didn't like it much, but Sheehan was now as powerful as an ex-demon lord, and by definition, Benamaru as well. Hell, maybe even Soe and Geld. Or maybe I'm overthinking it? Watching Sheehan grow must be wrecking my mind or something. Or not. Better stop thinking too much about it. I'm sorry, was that not enough? Sheehan must have been taking my disturbed look wrong, as she eyed the three heaps sprawled on the ground. No, no, that's fine. I hurriedly shouted. That was more than enough, yes. And if you guys have had enough, then stop getting in our way. Also, the other demon lords are even worse than that, so try not to fall out of line again, okay? That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Aditya Sharma, Daniel Oxley, Shukran, Slong, Muhammad Norais Alikan, Stratus Lampro, Bonjin Cozy de la Lisa, Eric Fimate, Joshua Juarez, and last but not least, shout out to Kaneki Galias. I'll see you guys in the next video.